let's head out to the phone lines as we uh, check in with the uh, Blazer assistant, David Vanderpool. Coach, uh, another nice break in between games here. Uh, and as Coach Stotts told us on the postgame show last night on radio that uh, this was an optional day. So on an optional day, how many guys decided still to show up for either treatment or maybe to get a little workout in? <laughs> Honestly, pretty much everyone. So, you know, I don't know how, you know, it's, it is optional and the guys do have a choice, but Everybody was there. Damien got a workout in. L.A. came in, got some shots. Different guys came in and got treatment and therapy and a lot of different type of things. So pretty much everybody comes to work every single day, and, and that's a good thing. You want that. Do you do you think there's a little bit of peer pressure in that, Coach? Nobody wants to be the only guy that didn't show up. Because uh, I know when I played, there was a lot of that, especially on the better teams I played for. Uh, it, you didn't want to be the only guy what, that wasn't in there working. Well, it has been, and normally, in my opinion, it should be. Uh, however, we've made it clear that optional does actually mean optional, so it's not like a, you know, optional with an asterisk by it. Right. But the bottom line is when you have comp competitive people in your building and, and you want to have that, obviously they all want to want to get better. They all want to better their situation. They all want to increase their playing time. Even the starters and the guys that play major minutes want to play more minutes so and, and improve themselves. So, I mean, it, it's nothing but an opportunity uh, when you have a day where you can actually come in the gym, improve some things on, uh, about your game and about yourself without any uh, any major, uh, major setup or instruction from the coaches. I mean, we come in, we work with the guys, and we will put them through a lot of different things depending on who they are. But, you know, it is their day, so they have the option to – to be able to work on whatever it is they feel feel they need to work on individually. So it's, it's really good. It works out for everybody. We were a little curious about Wes. Um, obviously a very scary uh, slip last night that uh, looked like it could have been serious. Uh, has to be helped back to the locker room. Uh, not only seemed to be okay, but came back into the game. Didn't have the kind of shooting night that he normally uh, does, but did he have any lingering effects uh, the night after uh, or the morning after as he came back in today and I'm sure got some treatment? Well, surprisingly, I, I mean, again, if anyone saw the replay of what happened, and I know I watched it myself during the game when they showed it on the on the big board, it, it really was a scary situation as far as it looked. And, you know, anyone else I don't think would have gotten up from that. And Wes got up and, and continued to play and wanted to play, as a matter of fact, immediately. And that's just, you know, that's just the type of heart that he has, the type of desire that he has to better himself, man. He actually was feeling feeling pretty good today. It was, you know, more of a hyperextension than anything. And, of course, we're going to take as many precautions that are necessary to, to make sure that he's fine before we put him back, back out there full board. But with his heart and, and, and you know, the, the Iron Man thing is, is something, I guess, that, you know, they've made as a moniker for him and, and more of a, a nickname as far as trailblazers go. But it, it might he might have a little bit of that. That stuff that Tony Stark had in his chest. Maybe he has something <laughs> in his heart with that stuff, too. So, I, I don't know. I haven't checked, but I'm sure on the MRI something will show up. We were saying he's just he's just built – just, there's something different yeah, about the way, he, the way he's put together. There's no question about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe in mind over matter at times, and I know he's, he's really the type of person that really has a strong will and a strong mentality, and it shows through in everything that he does. You know, it seemed like, uh, and there was a collective uh, gasp and then a collective sigh of relief when he came back out there on the court. Coach, you've been around the NBA and around basketball a long time. Talk to me about this team, though. I mean, you guys had a tremendous record th at this point last year. This year, you're one game better than you were at the same point. How what's what's happened to allow this team? First of all, that, that the type of start you had last year, but then you guys have taken it one step further because you're playing a different type of basketball. Well, I mean, with anything, obviously, you want to try to build a, cu a culture. And one of the things that, that we tried to incorporate, especially when we first got here, and I know Coach Stott really really was big on incorporating a, a, a new culture for the Blazers. And as far as how guys approach the game and their attitude, especially offensively and how we played, ball movement, player movement, and defensively really making that a staple 
and trying our best to put our imprint on, on the team and on the players that we're here. And over the period of time, you know, just like just like you guys talked about guys coming in the gym and not wanting to be the one that does not show up on the optional day, that's a part of the culture. And you get things like that to begin to drive drive the, the team and drive your record and drive all of the things that happen with and around the organization. And when the culture starts to become as strong as possible, guys really have to certain standards for not just themselves, but for, for the rest of the players on the team, and they hold each other to that. It, it, it kind of takes on a life of its own. So, you know, we, we set a standard, and guys really bought into it and have a have a, an attitude where, you know, anything less is not a part of who the Trailblazers are or who they want to be. So we've just really been striving to continue to get better every single day and, and let the wins take care of themselves, but just continue to try to, try to breed and, and embody the culture that, that's been built here. Coach, on day one uh, that he got here, you've been as close as anybody to, to Damian and uh, kind of a, a mentor in many respects, and you guys have had a, a very good friendship with one another in addition to a coach-player relationship. Uh, some guys run away from late-game situations that uh, big plays are called for. He just seems to relish and embrace them uh, and obviously excels in those kind of situations. Did you know that about him as you got to, to get to know him as a professional, or is that something that has developed in the time that he just continues to expand on his already great game? Well, I mean, I, I, I really did always see the lack of fear that he's always had since he's gotten here. Uh, he, he's never been afraid of anything. And a lot of times that can be something that it could be a, a, a bad thing because sometimes you need fear to test the, test the spirit sometimes. But for him, as far as basketball goes, he's not afraid of anything or any situation. And when you have that going in, along coupled with, with his, his attitude and his work ethic when it comes to, to, to the game, uh, I mean, one of the big things for him, to me, was he's always been receptive to, to learning. So any, anyone that wants, wants to try to teach him something or if there's, all, if there's a lesson to be learned, and Dame is the type of person that will listen and try to learn it. And he's, he's never shied away from any teachings. And, and a lot of the things, like you said, we've been really close since he's gotten here. And he's never... I'm sure he's questioning his mind, maybe some things that I've told him or tried to get him to do, but for some reason he tries it every single time, man. It's not so much only, you know, through through summers and, and that type of work, but if we work on something like immediately before a game, I'm like, you know what, you should do this, you know, and try to do this, try to do that. He'll actually do it or try it during the game, and it's a lot of a lot of trust that's there in that situation. I'm, I'm happy that he trusts some of the things that I may, may try to to help him with but a lot of times guys just being receptive to learning it, it gives you a, a huge advantage in in your development when coach Stotts, uh recommends certain things for Damian tells him you need to do this over that he automatically just grasps onto it and and tries to do his best to do exactly what's being asked of him and you don't get that from a lot of superstars but for him I mean he's in a situation now where it's his star just continues to rise, and with his own natural ability, not shying away from those moments, having that lack of fear for, for those situations as they come, and then being able to to just continue to have that yearning to learn things, learn new things as, as it happens. I mean, I think people forget that he's only in his third season, and, you know, it's, it's easy to compare him to some of the other guys that are all-stars and have been in the league for six and seven years and all these other type of things just because of the things he's been able to accomplish but he's still learning he's, he still has a lot to learn and i just see him getting better and better every single day and last night uh, became the uh, fastest nba player ever to get to 200 three-point field goals made uh, in his career and uh, wow. did so uh, even faster than Clay Thompson did and did it by a bunch uh, of games sooner than uh, Clay did. So uh, he continues to, to marvel, that's for sure. And uh, fortunately, this team is doing the same. Coach, thanks for the visit tonight. Have a, a good day back at practice tomorrow, and we'll see you back at the Moda Center on Thursday night for the matchup with Miami. Thanks, fellas. See you tomorrow. Blazer assistant David Vanderpool, some good things to say. He and Dame have really been uh, tight since day one, and uh, it's been a good partnership, and uh, and it's nice that as good as Damien is, he's still willing to try oh. some things to be even better. You know what I like, really like about him? He is the most personable star I've ever met in my Absolutely. life. Absolutely. You know, he just – you call him, 
He answers. That's the type of person he is. I told him, I said, uh, he, he says hi to everybody. It doesn't matter if you're the president of, of a place or, or if you're somebody who's uh, an intern.